Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the dorsal spadis artery. Dorsal spadis artery is also called arteria dorsal spadis. This is the chief artery on the dorsum of the foot. The dorsal spadis artery is a continuation of the anterior tibial artery. The dorsalis pedis artery is a continuation of the anterior tibial artery. in front of the ankle joint. In between the lateral lateral and medial meliuli So, we got the dorsal spadis artery. This is the medial malleolus, a part of the tibia. This is, this is the lateral malleolus, a part of the fibula. Here is the ankle joint and it is formed in front of the ankle joint in between the lateral and medial malleoli. Malleoli means lateral malleolus and medial malleolus. This is medial malleolus and this is lateral malleolus. Okay, we got the, the formation above antitibial artery, below here in the ankle joint, it becomes the anterior TB and it becomes the, the anterior artery becomes the dorsal pedis artery. Okay, it's course. We go to the course of the anterior, course of the dorsal pedis artery. Okay, course of the dorsal pedis artery. Dorsal is Pedis artery. Okay. So the dorsal pedis artery passes a bit medial and the dorsal on the foot. It passes on the dorsal of the foot of the foot. Obha the Over the capsule of the ankle joint, okay, and the talus bone. This is the talus, tarsal bone, talus bone, talus. Then this is the navicular bone, navicular. Talus, navicular. Then this is the intermediate cuneiform. Intermediate cuneiform, cuneiform bone. Okay, and intermediate. Uniform. Okay. Then it goes to the to the first inter 
cos intact matter torsion space matter torsion space okay so this is the course of the dorsal pedis artery this is the dorsal pedis artery dorsal pedis artery okay we got the course then then what happened in the proximal part of the first intermetatorsal space okay in the proximal part of the part of the first intermetatorsal tarsal space okay the dorsal is pedis artery dorsal is pedis artery passes between the two heads between the two heads of the first first dorsal interosse muscle interosse muscle of the foot interosse muscle of the foot of the foot and and connect the lateral plantar artery lateral plantar artery plantar artery and forms the that will complete the plantar arch okay so it goes between two head of the fastus interosse as a deep plantar branch or deep plantar artery and that will unite with the lateral plantar artery to form to form plantar arch plantar arch okay this is the course of the dorsalis pedis artery okay so we got the course then we we'll go to the branches of the dorsalis pedis artery branches of the dorsalis pedis artery branches we have the medial tarsal branches medial tarsal okay we have the lateral tarsal branch lateral tarsal branch okay we have the arcuate artery arcuate artery and we have the metatarsal arteries metatarsal metatarsal arteries arteries okay from metatarsal artery we will get the digital artery here we get the digital arteries from metatarsal arteries so we got and this deep branch it goes between the two head of the first dorsal interosse muscle we call it deep plantar branch you may call it deep plantar plantar branch okay we got the branches of the dorsal is pedis artery okay now we must learn the relationships relations of okay. relations of the dorsal is pedis artery anteriorly it is related to the 
anteriorly it is related to the skin superficial fascia superficial fascia okay and the deep fascia and we have the inferior extensory reticulum there is a thickening of the deep fascia inferior extensor retina coulomb of the foot retina coulomb of the foot okay it is also it is also crossed by the anteriorly here this is the tendon of the tendon of the extensor hallucis brevis extensor hallucis brevis this is the extensor hallucis brevis okay we got the anterior relationship posterior relationship just to have covered that part the capsule of the ankle joint the talus bone navicular bone intermediate cuneiform bone okay these are the posterior relationship okay medially medially what structure is related to this this is the extensor hallucis longus this is the tendon tendon of extensor hallucis hallucis longus okay that is medial laterally it is related to the tendon of the tendon of the laterally it is related to the tendon of the first tendon of the first tendon of the extensor digitorum longus first tendon this is that this is the tendon first tendon of the of the extensor okay extensor digitorum longus digitorum longus okay laterally is also related to the the deep fibular nerve okay the medial branch of the deep fibular nerve lateral relationship we get this tendon this is the first tendon of the extensor digitorum longus plus we get the deep fibular nerve the medial branch okay we got the relationship of the dorsal pedis artery we got the branches okay now we learn the the clinical significance or clinical anatomy okay is very important artery especially to diagnose peripheral vascular disease sometimes blood vessel may be occluded due to any region like that of the barger's disease or in case of complicated hypercholesterolemia or atherosclerotic condition or as a complication of diabetes okay so what will happen we'll get we, the physician palpate that artery with the thumb anywhere from the formation formation to the proximal part of the proximal part of the first intermetatarsal space anywhere against the bone these are the bone talus navicular intermediate uniform bone physician attempt to press it press it and attempt to get the pulse of the dorsal spadis artery so pulse may be absent or may be feeble in some vaso occlusive disorder like that of barger's disease or complication of atherosclerosis or in case of complicated diabetes mellitus even due to sickle cell anemia 
CO2 crisis, okay? There may be occlusion. So we may not get pulse. So what we get? We get patient will complain of pain, pallor, pallor, paresthesia, paresthesia, paralysis, paralysis, and pulselessness, pulselessness. This may be the presentation of a patient with vaso-occlusive disorder, vaso-occlusive disorder or DGs. Okay, we got that. The Usually it is palpated between the tendon of the extensor hallucis longus and the first, first tendon of the extensor digitorum longus. Okay, it may be palpated anywhere from the beginning up to the proximal part of the of the first intermetatarsal space against the tarsal bones. Okay, that's all about the anatomy of the dorsal spadis artery. If you like my video, please support my channel. Please subscribe me and please share the information with your friends. Have a nice day. Bye now.